Oh, you found it. <laughs> 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 Try to open the wine. Thank you. <laughs> open his wine. Tell some jokes. <laughs> Play, here comes the bride. Bad <laughs> 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 Oh, sober at the moment. Yeah. Oh, what? I know. That's a lie. When I was at the bar, I tried to get some wine. <laughs> and the lady looked at me and she said, she said, Night Fox isn't here to pay for it. I said, oh shit. <laughs> Fox Moore has had in almost three days. Thanks to Lufthansa. They loved his luggage. They wanted to give it a tour of Europe. It saw Frankfurt, it saw Milan, it saw Paris. It was on its way to Tokyo before they called it back. There's a pair of pants missing, so. Uh, I don't know where they ended up. Yeah. Well, I don't know what happened. I still oh. mine. <laughs> I have not had a lot of good luck with air travel. I tend to fly United Airlines. Some of you who follow my Twitter, 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 whatever that thing is called, might have seen some of my tweet tweets that I make about United Airlines. Little passive aggressive things I say like, well, congratulations United Airlines, they got me here less than two hours late. <laughs> They used to answer the tweets, but they don't anymore. I think they have me muted. <laughs> well, I tried an experiment when I went to Megaplex in Florida. I went to Megaplex, and I thought, I'm going to try flying a different airline. 
I'm going to try flying Delta Airlines. Well, partly because United Airlines was going to charge me $600 for a trip in coach class that had one stop where I had to wait for four hours. On Delta Airlines, I could take a direct flight in first class for $400. This is called economics. Americans invented that. No, actually, Scots invented that. Americans invented being dirt cheap. That's what we invented. No, the Scots invented that too, actually. Sorry. So I got on this Delta flight. And I stepped from Raleigh, North Carolina, directly into the Twilight Zone. <laughs> because I arrived at the airport. Picture, if you will, a business traveler on his way to Florida. I got to the airport. It was mobbed. Just completely wall-to-wall -wall people. People packed in so tight, they were like this. And there was even one man that was packed in so tight, I noticed his feet weren't on the floor. <laughs> pushed up like this. And I tried to make my way to the, the desk to check in my luggage. My luggage is a very large case that holds wine bottles. I had to bring that. So I noticed there was a, a, a gap in the crowd, like, like the human Grand Canyon. And I followed it along, and it led right up to the first class counter. There was nobody standing there, just one lady looking bored. So I went up, and I checked in my bag, and I got my ticket. Now it's time to go through security. Now remember, this is security at an American airport. They had to look at every single person, and they had to fill out the A card for every single person. If you don't know what that is, the A card, it's a little card that they give you when you check in. And when you go to security, the security man looks at you and he, he ticks off a box. There's two boxes, Arab, not Arab. <laughs> so I had my card. We have a thing called TSA PreCheck. PreCheck basically says, I give them a lot of money and sign my name certifying that I'm not an Arab. <laughs> and they give me a line where I can just sort of walk through security. I don't need to take off my shoes. I don't need to take off my underwear. I don't need to take off my belt. I don't need to take out my eyeballs. I can just walk through the security. <laughs> and when I got there, all these people were queued up in this long, sneaking line. There must have been English. Just that went all the way around the airport terminal and this way and up the stairs and down the stairs and outside into the rain and back inside again. But there was nobody at the pre-check. I said, well, this must be my lucky day. So I went to the pre-check line, showed him my card, not A. Okay, thank you, yes. So I went through, got my bag, went inside, and I sat down to wait for my flight. And I waited not very long. I remember I had a first class ticket. So they called and they said, okay, any passengers needing extra assistance? You may board now. Okay, we like that. And then they said, okay, we'll now board our first class cabin. Okay, I got my little carry on, I started toward the gate. Uh, is this the right gate? And he said, yes. I said, where's everyone else? She said, you're the only one. <laughs> now, it would have been a better story if she'd said in a real creepy voice like, you're the only one. <laughs> but she didn't. I got onto the plane, which was a full plane, but I had the entire first class cabin to myself. <laughs> on one hand, it was cool. On the other hand, it was creepy. Because I could feel the eyes of the other people on the back of my head. I said, lady, could you close that curtain back there? I don't want them looking at me. Now, it was neat because there is a first class flight attendant. And that meant I had a private flight attendant for the entire trip, just for me. And there were 12 seats. So I tried out each one every 10 minutes. <laughs> I had some fun with the lady too. I said, may I have a glass of wine, please? She will be.
<laughs> oh, um, I, I dropped my napkin. Could you get another one for me? <laughs> <laughs> we arrived at Orlando, and I got off the plane, and I walked through the tunnel, and I came to the baggage claim. Now, you must appreciate the timing. As I approached the baggage claim, instantly my yellow wine case came out and walked it just right up in front of me and I just picked it up. And there was no one else at the baggage carousel. I said, this is starting to worry me. So I called the hotel. I need the shuttle. And I went down to the little shuttle area. There's sliding doors, and outside there's a little parking space where the shuttle comes. I walked to the sliding doors, and as soon as I stepped up to that little parking place, the shuttle pulled in. And the driver got out. Now, I would like to say that he looked like, you know, the tall man from Fantasia or something. He said, you know, welcome, Mr. Conway. I didn't give you my name. We know your name. <laughs> One way trip to the hotel. <laughs> but no, he just took my bag, put it in the back, and I sat inside and I was looking very nervous. <laughs> and he said, is everything all right, sir? I said, no. And I told him the story. I said, everything is going too perfectly. There's something wrong. <laughs> The world doesn't work this way! <laughs> Something's going to happen! It's fate! I'm doomed! Um, the, 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 the tire will explode on, on the van and, and we'll both die! A, a, a meteor will, will crash down from the sky and land in front of the van! We'll get to the hotel and it'll be full of freaks in, in animal costumes! Or, <laughs> And the driver said, uh... <laughs> but I couldn't keep it going because he looked over his shoulder and he said, you're one of them, aren't you? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the story is true. Now, if only every flight could be that way, but no, it's not going to happen. I spent all of the good flight karma on that one trip. And unfortunately, I even used up Fox Amores. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there is only so much flight karma out there. Now, I am a frequent flyer. Oh, I know all about flight karma, believe me. <clears throat> um, since I fly very often, I get a little card. Now, the airlines have their frequent flyer clubs. There's the silver level, the gold level, the platinum level, and then my level. <laughs> the amazing super colossal silver gold platinum chairman suck my dick level. <laughs> Abbreviated SMD. So I have a card that says SMD on it. So all I have to do is flash that to the United Executive and they will say, ooh, and they will get under the table and they will take care of anything I need. <laughs> now also as a frequent flyer, I know that there are certain things you want to avoid. And this I will teach to all of you, because I think this is the same around the world. Have you ever been in a situation when they say, oh, this flight is oversold. We're looking for volunteers to give up a seat. We'll give you a voucher for a free ticket. Ooh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Free ticket. Yes, I will give up my seat to this poor little old lady here. And, oh, put me on the next flight out, that's fine. Give me a voucher for a free ticket, that's great. I go home. And I looked at my voucher and it said, free ticket. Some restrictions apply. <laughs> but they always say that, right? So I, uh, plan, I plan out my conventions a year in advance. 
I'm already, I already know which flights I'm going to take for Euroferments 22, which is the same weekend, I hope, because <laughs> that would really ruin it. But I called up the airline. I said, I want to use my free ticket. I want to go to San Jose. Oh, no, you cannot. I said, why I cannot? She said, it's blacked out. I said, we'll turn the lights on. <laughs> they said, no, 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 you cannot. You oh, <laughs> he's got a brother. <laughs> there we are. Mm -hmm. We're still here, too. We've got my whole little family here. Okay, well, if not San Jose, oh, how about Seattle? Nope. All of the free ticket seats are gone on that aircraft. I said, can you bolt some more in? She said, no. I tried everything. Okay, if not San Jose, well, okay, Chicago. Atlanta, Tennessee, Nashville, Germany, <laughs> no. I got all the way around to the one year expiration date. None of the flights I wanted to take were going to work. I got very angry and I said to the lady, where can I use this voucher? And she said, sir, I don't understand. I said, you understand perfectly. You pick a flight for me and tell me where I can go. And she paused, and I heard her terminal clicking. She said, well, you could go to Greensboro, South Carolina. I said, do it! Fly me down to Greensboro, South Carolina, put me on the very next flight back. There and back again. And she said, but why? I said, because I'm going to make you do this. I got a free ticket. I'm going to take it. And I did. I flew down there. And they canceled the flight back. <laughs> it was shortly thereafter that I decided to stick to one airline to get the SMD card. Because they're not going to do that to an SMD flight. Of course, if the flight is canceled, there's not much I can do. They're not going to pull a new airplane out of their ass and put it there just for me. <laughs> Although, if I get the next level up, maybe they will. <laughs> That's the bullet. No, we're not going there. Uh, I was flying from Seattle. I was flying from Seattle, Washington. And it was an early morning flight. Seven in the morning was when the flight left. So I got to the airport, and the first thing I saw was a, a mountain of people. It looked like a fur pile, but it was all business suits. It was a business pile. And they were all piled up on top of that little podium. And there was a sign that said, Oversold flight looking for volunteers. Oh, here we go. Uh -huh. Let's see what we'll get. So um, this little man with a shovel came by and shoveled everybody off of the podium. And I went up and I said, excuse me. Are you looking for volunteers? She said, yes! I'll give you $600 in the next flight out. Ooh, wait. That's money. That's a voucher for $600 off your next plane ticket. That is nice. It's going to cost me $600, for example, to go to Euroferns next time around. I've got the ticket budgeted. This will give me an extra $600 to play with. Yes, give me that voucher for $600. Give it to me now. And she said, well, we have to wait and see if we need it. I said, didn't you see the business pile? <laughs> and she said, well, somebody might not show up. I said, he's going to have to be a pretty goddamn fat guy. <laughs> so she said, just step back and wait. So I stepped back. And the next person to walk up was a tiny, frail little old lady. She, she looked a Pacific Islander, a little Asian type lady. She walked up, she had a very slow little walk, and she had a ticket in her hand. And I thought, oh, what a nice little lady. And she started to walk up to the counter. And then the American showed up. You know exactly who I mean. This is the American that we don't like coming over here because he embarrasses us. <laughs> this guy pushed past the little lady and said, Now what is this? Why is it? Why does my ticket say confirmed? This says a confirmed seat. If I have a confirmed seat, you better goddamn well give me a seat on this airplane. You owe me that seat. I am not going to be put on another flight. Why do you? Now, I didn't take kindly to this. 
because where I come from, that's very rude. Also, even though it was seven o'clock in the morning, I'd started early. <laughs> I started at five. <laughs> so I stepped up, the little old lady was kind of stepping backward, and I said, and I leaned up, and I said, I beg your pardon, sir, uh, you do realize you just stepped in front of a lady. And he said, that's okay, now what are you going to do for me because I need to be in this place by this time and if you don't do it, I'm going to sue you because you people, you sold me the ticket, you gotta give me the seat. I said, that's okay? How far into this do I want to get? <laughs> hmm. So he stepped back and I, I wanted to make sure nothing, I, I, I kind of ushered the little lady up and I made sure that she got taken care of. And I stepped back, and when she stepped away, I went up to the counter, and I said, excuse me, that guy, the blowhard that just left here, I want to make sure he doesn't get my seat. I want the old lady to get my seat because she's sweet, but I do not want him to get my seat. And the lady said, I, I, can't, I can't do that, sir. I said, yes, you can. I know you can. Because he's an asshole. <laughs> you got an asshole button there. I see it. You, you hit it half the time when I show up. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> she said, that button's broken, sir. We can't use it today. Now, could you please, just, I, I'm trying hard. And I said, oh, okay. I, I'm giving her trouble. I think. Oh, just anything. Give it to anybody, but just not the asshole. <laughs> so I stepped back. And I watched a few more persons come up and the lady was trying to reaccommodate them. And then he came back. It hadn't been but five minutes, he came back. What's taking so long? Didn't I tell you that I had to, it says, it says confirm C. Confirm means you're going to put me on this plane. I am not going to take another flight. And I was standing behind him and saying to the lady, I looked back and the old lady was looking at me. <laughs> and she was knitting and she looked and she said, <laughs> So, Conway, please approach the podium. It's like, <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And she pulled up. It was it was like Willy Wonka's golden ticket. This light was shining off it. I heard angels singing, and she handed it to me. And here it is. Good for six hundred dollars off the cost of any flight. I'm like, uh, uh, so I said, so what is my next flight? She said, there is a Delta flight. Delta, remember them? It's leaving at twelve o'clock. So you, I'm sorry, you'll have to wait another four and a half hours. I said, four and a half hours is worth it to me. Thank you so much. <clears throat> and she gave me my Delta tickets and I started to walk away and I heard her say, Passenger McCallum, and he went storming past. And I went back and I saw her hand a ticket to him and I looked over and it was my seat. He had gotten my seat. And it's like, mm. I cannot let this go. I just, I, I'm sitting back doing this. And he started bitching out the lady at the counter for giving him a hard time. And he took his, uh, his thing and he, he started to walk. He, he checked in his ticket, went the beep, and he started down the, 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 the jetway. And as soon as he stepped around the corner, I said, have a nice flight, Mr. McCallan, you self-important douchebag. <laughs> and he started to turn around, and the flight attendant said, No, sir, you have to board now, you have to go, you have to go now. 
Yes, you have to go, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I've got my $600 voucher. I just went like, okay, I'm going to take my four and a half hours and go to the Delta counter. And as I was walking away, I saw a young man looking very sad. He was standing there, he had his bags in his hands, he was staring at the floor. I said, uh, did, did you drop something? <laughs> what, what's wrong, son? He said, I don't think I'm going to get on this flight. And I said, oh, well, <clears throat> sucks to be you. <laughs> Sorry. And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm on orders, and I've been in this airport for two days. If I don't get back, I'm going to be in trouble. And I said, whoa, wait, on orders, you're a soldier? He said, yes, I'm going to Fort Bragg in North Carolina. Okay, I don't know about any other country in the world, but in the American military, if you are given permission to take time off, you damn well better be back on time. Because if you're not, that's called absent without leave, A-W-O-L, AWOL. They don't do nice things to you when you are AWOL. Because we need a way for our boys to practice for when they actually see Arabs. So they use the boys who are AWOL for the practice. I know that's a terrible joke, but I don't think it's a joke, I think it's real. Anyway, um, I have a soft spot for soldiers. soldiers really do a hell of a job. Doesn't matter what country you're from, doesn't matter your politics. A soldier is a man who goes out there and puts himself through hell so the people in his country don't have to. That's a wonderful profession. Again, doesn't matter where you're from, the foot soldier, as far as I know, is the salt of mankind. So I said, I have to help this young man, because he 